Uh, welcome, bonsoir, good evening. Um, uh, my name is Carrie, and I represent Citizens for Public Justice at For the Love of Creation, a national initiative that brings together faith bodies, faith-based organizations uh, in Canada under a unified banner to mobilize education, reflection, action, and advocacy for climate justice. I'm pleased to welcome you all here this evening. Bienvenue à tous et à toutes. Bienvenidos a todos. Of course, we want to start off this evening's discussion in a good way. I acknowledge that we are meeting on the traditional territories of Indigenous peoples across Turtle Island. We thank them for allowing us to meet and learn together on their territories. To the original caretakers of this land, I would like to acknowledge that I am joining you this evening from the unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabewaki in rural West Quebec. To all that were here for thousands of years, before us across Turtle Island. We honor the struggles and the lives of those lost. For those here today, we acknowledge the ancestors. Beneath our feet, we acknowledge the land. Everyone is welcome here. If you wish, you can add to our collective territorial acknowledgement by introducing yourself and the place you're joining from in the chat. Miigwech. As you know, we're into election season. We got a snippet, a little preview there of uh, tonight's federal leaders debate. Um, but this is also the season of creation and climate action month. This evening's event is the first of a three part series of For the Love of Creation climate advocacy webinars. Back in February, we launched our faith in action campaign to mobilize people across Canada to reduce their personal and household greenhouse gas emissions and to demonstrate support by writing letters to federal cabinet ministers calling for increased federal climate action. Specifically, we were calling on the government of Canada to increase our national emissions reductions target and invest in a just transition to a fair, inclusive, green economy. We also called on them to implement the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, including but not limited to the right to free, uh, prior and informed consent. And finally, we encouraged our uh, government to commit equal support for climate, climate change adaptation and mitigation measures in the global south. We had anticipated that this campaign would go into the beginning of October, the end of the season of creation, but of course we've been interrupted uh, by the election, but have decided that this was no reason not to continue the dialogue, the discourse and the learning together. So each of our three webinars tonight and the following two Thursdays will focus on one of our calls to action, highlighting progress made over the course of this year, and there has been some, which is exciting and encouraging, and identifying next steps. Our hope is that through these webinars, you will feel encouraged and equipped to continue to engage in climate justice advocacy. In the first instance, we hope that you'll keep these issues in mind as you determine how to vote in the federal election on September 20th. And beyond that, that you will remain active citizens and continue to be part of both the dialogue and the action needed to achieve climate justice. I'd now like to introduce Bishop Priscilla Shaw, who has graciously agreed to moderate this evening. Bishop Priscilla Shaw serves in the Anglican Diocese of Toronto. With Métis family roots, she grew up on a small farm learning from the land. Ordained a priest in 2001 and bishop in 2017, her ministry has been inspired by Desmond Tutu with the South African Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Priscilla is connected into justice work, community building, and is actively involved in working with the National Indigenous Anglican Church in reconciliation with the colonial church. On a personal note, she is married and has two teenagers. She loves the fresh air and the Northern Lights. Thank you and welcome Bishop Priscilla. Thank you. It's a privilege to be here this evening, and uh, I'd like to open us up with prayer. So I invite you to adopt a stance of prayer. We'll take a moment to collect ourselves. Gracious and Holy One of Blessing, we give you thanks for this opportunity to gather together this evening. We ask your blessing upon each of our speakers, upon this event, upon our hearts as we go out inspired and motivated to work for change. In the words of St. Francis, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there's hatred, let me sow love. 
where there's injury, pardon, where there's doubt, faith, where there's despair, hope, where there's darkness, light, where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. We're joined, thank you, Bishop Priscilla. Uh, we're joined this evening um, by um, a couple of speakers who will talk to us about um, the importance of Canadian support for climate, climate change adaptation and mitigation in the Global South. Um, and Bishop, if I could invite you to introduce um, our speakers, please. Yes. Um, so this evening we welcome um, in our virtual midst, Weni Matinda. Weni is public policy advisor for climate change with Food Grains Bank and has 14 plus years of project management experience in community development, food security and livelihoods programming, both in Canada among indigenous populations and in Northern Ghana, Uganda, Ethiopia, Kenya and Tanzania. Mweni holds a Bachelor of Arts in Communication Studies and English Literature from Crandall University, Master of Arts in Theology from Acadia University, a Postgraduate Certificate in International Development from Humber Institute of Technology and Advanced Learning, and a Project Leadership Certificate from Cornell University. Mweni believes the sustained transformation can only come about when, approached to, when approaches to meaningful collaboration are challenged to ensure their integrity and intentionally invite full and active participation of all stakeholders to co-create inclusive, engaging and meaningful spaces, ideas and solutions. That's Moeni, thank you very much. And Alma, Alma Montoya is the director of the Colombian organization Grupo Comunicarte, a World Association of Christian Communication member. Comunicarte employs communication strategies to strengthen the social fabric of communities across the country to promote greater equity, social justice, and foster sustainable and democratic development. The work is done particularly via rural radio networks. Comunicarte connects with the network of community Radio of Putumayo, Canto Yaco, and with El Air, a regional network of community media outlets, Quito. Its red pan Amazonica de Comunicación has environmental reporters focusing on issues in the Amazons. Primus World Relief and Development Fund supports environmental education for the protection of moorlands in Colombia done with the participation of 10 local radio networks across the country. That's Alma, thank you. Great. Thank you so much. I hope you can hear me. Excellent. I am so happy to be here this evening and I'll take the next uh, few moments and share a bit about Canada's climate finance, supporting climate change, adaptation and mitigation in the Global South. Uh, if we go into the first slide, um, I just want to make an overview of, of where we are. Um, so a few months ago, specifically in June, uh, when Prime Minister Justin Trudeau was attending the G7 Leader Summit in Cornwall, UK, he announced the doubling of Canada's climate finance from 2.65 billion in 2015 
to 5.3 billion over five years. This includes increased support for adaptation as well as nature and nature-based solutions and an increase in Canada's provision of grants to 40%, up from 30% previously. According to the communique, this funding will help developing countries to build domestic capacity to take climate action, build resilience, and reduce pollution. First, it is important to recognize the progress in that this announcement is a response to what the sector has been asking actually for years through coalitions like Corporation Canada, Climate Action Network, and Canadian Co uh, Coalition on Climate Change and Development through structured consultation processes, which brought multiple voices to engage government on climate finance. So Canada's doubling is also in response to UK's pressure and it's in response to the UN Secretary General's pressure for Canada to do more. So in terms of uh, if we go to the next slide, what specifically are people in the global south, namely small scale farmers experiencing for which the delivery of this climate finance commitment actually means something? Uh, these women and men across Africa, East Africa and others across the global south are facing climate challenges and extremes they did not create. They're navigating an uncertain future, doing the best they can to mitigate these unpredictable and extreme weather events coming their way. And their strength and resolve to work together to find solutions that work for them must inspire us to join forces and push for much needed climate finance action from wealthy nations. And this is where we come in as Canadians. So if we move to the next slide, what does this doubling of Canada's climate finance mean? With only a few lines in the announcement, it means there are a lot of unanswered questions. This is big news for Canada, and even though it may fall short of Canada's fair share, 6.5 billion is actually what's calculated as Canada's fair share given Canada's wealth as a nation. It's still a large commitment and will have consequence on future development work. Therefore, calling on more balanced funding for adaptation and mitigation priorities means, one, more to adaptation for small scale holders in the global south to build and strengthen resilience. National adaptation plans prioritize global south driven agendas, which are contextualized and fit the specific challenges they face. Number two, funds must be dispersed as grants, not loans. Historically, Canada's disbursement has been through multilateral development banks like the Asian Development Bank, the World Bank, et cetera, in the form of loans, which does not address the urgent needs of to build resilience for those most vulnerable to climate change. Number three, enhanced funding mechanisms ensure equity, fairness, transparency, and accountability, which are necessary to foster trust between North and South to effectively tackle global climate change, climate crises. This was a theme and has continued to be a theme over the years with Global South parties calling for immediate delivery of the 100 billion pledge by wealthy nations to address climate vulnerability. And four, Canada has a feminist international assistance policy that ensures women are actively engaged as agents of change within their own context. Effective disbursement of these funds needs to ensure the centering of the most vulnerable to negative climate impacts, not as victims, but strong agents of change for themselves and their families. This is also part of prioritizing the Global South agenda to implement contextualized climate resilience building solutions for themselves. So what does this mean for our work? Uh, in the next slide, we look at there is a role for us as Canadian citizens and civil society actors in the North to play in prioritizing the Global South agenda with our own government. And this will become increasingly more so in the coming federal election and the UN Conference of Parties or COP26 in November. Over and over during the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change June intercession, 
We heard our brothers and sisters in the Global South call for transparency, accountability, reliability of funding and immediate release to operationalize national adaptation plans. The challenges we face today are complex and global. They will need greater coordination, international collaboration and strategic partnerships to address and overcome. We need and must have everyone at the table if we're to create and sustain systems that work for people and planet. With climate impacts increasing, provisions to help the most vulnerable adapt, including through increased financial support, need to be strengthened. Responsibilities must be acknowledged and promise measures delivered. A well-designed climate finance package can help people adapt to climate impacts and drive gender equality while also overcoming poverty and hunger. This global effort will require a well-integrated implementation plan and all of us have a role to play within that. Just a note that the climate finance announcement was made after the 2021 budget. So it is not locked in. If the Liberals are not returned to power in this election, Canada's international climate finance is at risk. From what the Conservatives platform says, we could expect total climate finance to be reduced and a shift in focus from supporting developing countries to investing in Canadian businesses. And this is where all of us are encouraged to ask candidates in our writing about climate finance. So finally, uh, we can send a message now and, and we can continue our advocacy work toward meaningful change by writing letters to decision makers. I'm going to um, share other resources in the chat as well, but um, I will stop here and uh, look forward to conversations shortly. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Moeni. I appreciate that. It's a lot of information and um, it's really important. So thank you. <laughs> um, I would just like to let folks know that uh, Alma will be presenting in Spanish, but we can follow along with her slides in English. Over to you, Alma. Alma, no te escuchamos. Está mutada. Buenas noches para todos y para todas. Muchas gracias por la invitación. Estoy acá eh, compartiendo una experiencia y unas necesidades. Eh, represento a una pequeña ONG que estamos comprometidas con eh, la mitigación del cambio climático. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, thank you for the invitation. I'm here uh, working with an organization that, uh, that is committed to uh, climate change. Next. Siguiente. Eh, tenemos, no, anterior. Before. Ok, sí. Mm, hay, una, hay una necesidad muy grande y, y es precisamente lo que se está viviendo en toda América Latina. En una de las investigaciones que se hizo sobre la explotación minera, eh, sobre todo el trabajo de deforestación, de, de explotación que se está dando en el continente. Tristemente, uno de los países que sale eh, con ese con esa, eh, trabajo remarcado en los diferentes países es Canadá. Mm, Colombia tiene el privilegio, como varios de América Latina, de la ubicación geográfica de una cordillera rica, eh, por los Andes, una cordillera rica de minerales, con una selva 
una Amazonía que cubre nueve países y también con unos páramos que son las fábricas de agua. Pero tristemente esta explotación está trayendo unas consecuencias negativas. Y es precisamente este impacto ambiental. Es el desplazamiento forzado de las comunidades. Es la división y la fractura de las familias y del tejido social. Es la criminalización de todo lo que es manifestaciones o reclamo de los derechos humanos. Obviamente, es también las afectaciones económicas. Y la persecución, muchas veces, de los líderes y lideresas que defienden los derechos de la madre tierra. Pero también se ha dado por parte de compañías la fraudulenta adquisición de los territorios, territorios ancestrales de los indígenas, territorio de los afros y de los campesinos. Yeah, I would like to add to the last point of the fraudulent acquisition of property. Something that Alma is adding is that this, those properties are land that belongs to indigenous peoples and Afro-descendant people in Colombia who had lost their land that had been expropriated to be given to uh, big companies in the extractive industry. Siguiente. Next. Esto ha llevado que en todo el continente, en cada uno de los países, en diferentes momentos, surjan manifestaciones pidiendo una justicia climática, la defensa has, de la tierra. Okay. That has led to, to some um, uh, the, the rallies uh, on, in different countries in Latin America where people are asking for uh, climate justice because they are, they are looking for it, they are looking for justice for the land. Siguiente, next. Podemos resumir que estos problemas están en lo que tiene que ver con la deforestación de la selva, la deforestación de las montañas, el crecimiento, los cultivos ilícitos, la explotación minera, los grupos armados ilegales y obviamente todas las consecuencias de, este, de esta explotación que se está dando y que trae esas consecuencias de, de no tener los alimentos propios, de no tener lo suficiente y el empobrecimiento de la tierra. Lo decíamos ya como la persecución y también muerte de líderes ambientales. La falta de saber manejar los desechos no consumibles. Y la destrucción, también lo decíamos, de los grupos familiares y étnicos. Next. Por todo esto, sentimos una necesidad grande de trabajar unido a los países que replanteen cómo tener y cómo hacer una justicia climática para todos. Tenemos necesidad de seguir trabajando con las comunidades hacia una sensibilización de los problemas, pero sobre todo del cuidado de la tierra. El empoderamiento de las mujeres, 
como bien lo compartía Naimi. La necesidad de tu comunicación. La necesidad de una tecnología apropiada. Tecnología en trabajo, pero también tecnología de comunicaciones. Para poder hacer un trabajo de comunicación y educación. Difusión de las políticas ambientales y hacer un trabajo pedagógico con las buenas prácticas y las políticas apropiadas para cada uno de, de los países. Y obviamente una campaña y una estrategia para la defensa de los mmm, líderes, de los eh, promotores por los defensores de la tierra. Y obviamente la supervivencia cultural. Se están perdiendo las lenguas, se está perdiendo la diversidad de los pueblos indígenas. Next. Como grupo comunicarte, como pequeña ONG, pero obviamente con un trabajo articulado con otras ONGs en América Latina, trabajamos por los derechos humanos y los derechos de los pueblos. Trabajamos por todos los derechos de los seres vivientes, de los derechos de la Pachamama, de la tierra. Trabajamos por y desde la inclusión y equidad de género, por la participación de todos en un ejercicio democrático, por la autonomía de los pueblos ancestrales y autóctonos. Next. Trabajamos entre líneas, una por el cuidado de la Amazonía, el gran pulmón del mundo. Trabajamos por los bosques tropicales, pero gracias a la Iglesia Anglicana trabajamos y a la UAC, trabajamos por el cuidado de los páramos. Tenemos la cadena de fábricas de agua, más importante agua dulce, más importante que alimenta los ríos de toda América Latina. Sabemos que no es suficiente, pero ese es nuestro aporte. ¿Cuál es el aporte de ustedes? Hay, hay unos niños que son reporteros. Creemos en la educación de los niños, de los jóvenes. Obviamente trabajamos con los adultos, pero a las nuevas generaciones que están recibiendo este legado, debemos formarlos y están ya conscientes de la necesidad de este cuidado y de ver qué podemos hacer entre todos para mitigar el cambio climático, para cuidar la creación de Dios. Muchas gracias. Thank you. I would like to add a couple of things that Alma added at the end in terms of the, the work they believe is important to work with other countries and uh, education and technology is important and technology for communication particularly is important to have the communication technology for education. And um, one aspect that is very important to look for, and they are working on that, is to address the loss of diversity of indigenous peoples. And the loss of you know, the ecosystem and all that is 
that's being affected. And uh, at, the, at the end, there is a picture of the, a student from a school, a school radio network. And they say they believe, Comunicarte believes in the children and believes in the education of children. It is important to develop the awareness of children and to form them about the need for the, for the care for the environment and the need to take care of the creation. If I could, uh, gracias, Alma, gracias, and I thank you, Jeanette. Uh, I just wanted to add one more thing that I don't think I saw on the slide, and that was when Alma said, this is what we're doing. This is our commitment to action. What are you doing? Yes. Yes. Carrie, we lost your sound. Lost your sound. We can't hear you, Carrie. Hello? So I see Carrie uh, typed in the side there. Um, she's finished speaking and was just saying that Alma had said, this is our commitment. What are you going to do? Very good. Thank you. Thank you to the speakers, Alma and Moeni. And uh, it looks like on the agenda now is time for Alma and Moeni to talk to each other, have a bit of conversation back and forth. So I wonder if you would like to start that, and then we'll just uh, have a moment uh, for translation from Jeanette. Thank you. Ah, uh, bueno, ya agradecer las presentaciones y entonces dice que es el momento en que puede establecerse el diálogo entre las dos presentadoras y yo voy a estar traduciendo de aquí para allá. Ah, uh, entonces si si tus intervenciones son cortas, I will appreciate many if your interventions are not too long, so I can make translation. Thank you. Thank you, uh, and thank you. It's it's great to just spend some time and have a conversation. Uh, I think one of the things that I see in Alma's presentation is that there is uh, alignment in calling for. Uh, in this case, the Canadian government, but generally wealthy nations who have a responsibility and who are working in the global south to uh, not only work with care, but to implement and use uh, the processes and procedures that are adequate and appropriate and include the local communities and peoples. Janet, I don't know if that's Sorry, helpful. Too long. <laughs> Three different ideas, and I think I just skipped the last one. Uh, inclusive, inclusive dialogue, inclusive uh, approaches by the Canadian government. In this case, um, Alma is working with Indigenous communities. In our case, we're working with smallholder farmers. It, it, mm -hmm. There, there are definitely alignment. Okay. Um, uh, Moeni, uh, uh, agradece. Uh, eh, la presentación y dice que eh, ella ve que hay, hay coincidencias en las presentaciones y uno de esos puntos es primero un llamado al gobierno canadiense eh, acerca de su responsabilidad 
Eh, lo otro es en el sentido de con quiénes está trabajando. Entonces, por ejemplo, Comunicarte trabaja con pueblos indígenas y eh, en este caso, en el trabajo de Canadian Footprint Bank, se hace con eh, pequeños eh, granjeros. ¿no? Y, y también tenemos algo en común. Y, bueno. We also have something in some more in common. Eh, el trabajo con mm, promoción de la mujer. El papel del liderazgo y el empoderamiento de las mujeres. We also have a, a, a common the, the work with women, the, 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 the work of promoting the role that women and empowering women. Y, y quiero subrayar eh, la línea de educomunicación, de educomunicación. ¿Ah? Eh, está esa parte pedagógica por el nivel educativo eh, y también mm, por la, eh, la forma en cómo los mensajes a través de los medios llegan, ¿no? Sea en forma... Dije ¿Para la mujer? Para todas las comunidades. Ok, ok. Ancestrales, medios ancestrales. Okay. Analógico. O sea, es apropiada para esto. Para los analógicos para los... digitales. Okay. okay. Uh, I, I also want to highlight the fact of the edu communication, which is directed to different type of populations, uh, and you know, is 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 prepared for them and include different type of media. Yeah, I, I mean, I think the um, the work that we're involved in, even though it's different, um, I think at the end of the day, one of the other things I'm hearing us call for is action uh, and a collective action from the Canadian public to influence the Canadian government about Canada's foreign policy on some of these issues. Uh, I um... Although it seems like we are doing different things, I, I can, eh, perdón, que <laughs> eh, eh, a, a pesar de que estamos haciendo cosas eh, diferentes, eh, eh, yo veo que tenemos las similitudes en el término de hacer un llamado a la acción. Eh, segundo, en el sentido de hacer un llamado a la acción colectiva. Eh, por último, pedir también al pool, a la gente canadiense, a la gente ¿no? que tenga su parte, que pida a su gobierno. Que nosotros estamos aportando a través de las ONGs, estamos aportando desde nuestras realidades y de nuestras competencias y capacidades y que necesitamos manos solidarias. Uh, uh, it is important uh, that uh, to notice that we are doing our work. We as a small organizations uh, and uh, whatever uh, knowledge and possibilities and tools we have available, we're using those. But we need collaboration. We need the support. Mm -hmm. Yes, I echo that, and I wish the uh, ca uh, Canadian federal election candidates were on this call so they could listen to that uh, call, especially from the Global South. It's the Global South's voice, I think, that we in Canada need to amplify about the, the priorities, your priorities and your needs, so that as we engage our decision makers, we are presenting what you would like to see. and. And, and joining, we're joining hands with you in what you're working. Um, me gustaría mucho, eh, eh, yo hago eco a lo, que, a lo que ha dicho Alma, y también me gustaría mucho que algunos los candidatos eh, para las elecciones que están pasando en este momento, que van a pasar, se están preparando en este momento en Canadá, estuvieran presentes, porque es importante para, que, para ellos que vean la necesidad que hay en Canadá de priorizar este punto de acción climática. Uh -huh. okay. Por ejemplo, 
esta tarde eh, en la oficina conversábamos que el Tratado de Libre Comercio de Canadá con Colombia y con algunos países es, en, es eh, desequilibrado, es iniquitativo, la palabra Janet. ¿no? Ajá. Sí. Es iniquitativo porque... Um, eh, um, porque las, los, las materias primas ¿no? están dadas de, de las montañas y, y de las riquezas de esta tierra, ¿ya? Y um, están ter, eh, se termina con la riqueza del cultivo de la tierra cuando se hacen cultivos netamente um, de un solo producto, ¿no? Monocultivos. Y, y la naturaleza no alcanza a responder pero el Tratado de Libre Comercio con Canadá nos parcializó para hacer producciones y el campesino empezó a cambiar sus costumbres. ¿Por qué? Porque viene un dinero que se necesita para otras necesidades. Uh -huh. Y eso es bueno que lo sepan los gobernantes. Uh -huh. Uh, un ejemplo, uh, uh, a very good example uh, uh, on this is the, the uh, TLC, the, no, the free trade agreement, the free trade agreements and the ones that, for instance, uh, Canada has with Colombia uh, is very uneven and equal. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's putting the country in a situation with all the, the raw material that is taken from the mountains, that is taken from the cultivable land, you know, um, it's, it's going and it's disappearing, affecting um, uh, the people as well. The fact that people are, are forced to move into monoculture um, that is impacting on, on farmland and farmers. Uh, and, and nature don't have the time to recover. The soil doesn't have the time to recover. Um, uh, so what happened is that the peasants are forced to change their behavior, you know, the planting, you know, uh, uh, habits and traditions. Um, and this is, it's important that the candidates understand that, that they know that that's what is, uh, what they are impacting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are really great points. And um, it's, it's heartbreaking to know the desperate situation that a lot of men, women, and children are being forced into, particularly when you think about the, the, uh, the pandemic, of course, the exacerbated impacts of climate change, uh, the extreme weather events that have been happening that are negatively, that have been negatively affecting people in the global south. And now that um, it's become something that is uh, maybe in our doorstep in the north, there is a sense of, well, we have, to, we have to look after it. The climate change issue has always been an emergency. Uh, and it's been, it's urgent now more than ever to do something, not just because we're feeling the effects of the negative impacts here in the North, but because um, the people in the Global South have been experiencing the negative impacts. And, um, you know, I mentioned in my presentation that a lot of them, you know, indigenous people, smallholder farmers, uh, people eking out a living in the global south, they did not create the situations that they're having to, to deal with. And so if we go back to our sense of uh, call, vocation as a stewardship of, of each other, the resources and the land that we have, because there is a, a, a limit to what we have, um, how then does that shape the way we act, behave. Um, Sorry, Jeanette, that was a long comment. Uh, the, the last one, I, I may not have it. Have it on. Uh, um, 
es eh, Alma eh, Moenice, que es, eh, ella, ella concuerda, y que la situación de mucha gente eh, es desesperada en este momento, eh, que se ha acentuado mucho por lo de COVID, además eh, por las tragedias que hay, por el efecto climático, los desastres naturales. Eh, y eso afecta no solamente al sur, pero también ahora lo encontramos a la puerta, en la entrada de la puerta en los, en los países del norte. Eh, por tanto, hay un llamado a, a, que, a que esto sea la prioridad, no necesariamente porque está sucediendo en el norte, sino porque en el sur hay, 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 hay muchos efectos. Además, las personas que están sufriendo el impacto del cambio climático no fueron las personas que lo crearon. ¿No? no fue su responsabilidad. Eh, y, si, y si volvemos nuevamente a retomar ese error que se nos ha dado de ser los guardianes de la creación, entonces tenemos algo mucho más que hacer. Uh -huh. I don't know, Susana, if, if that last point is, I think is something missing there. No, I think that you, you captured it. It's good, Jeanette. I'm going to jump in here um, and just to, just to say, if folks have questions, um, please feel free to, uh, to put them in the chat and that we can, we can share them with Mueni and Alma. Um, but I think what comes to mind for me is, I, I'd be curious, I mean, I agree with you, Mueni, that it would be really fabulous if some of, the, some of our electoral candidates were here tonight we're able to, to hear the stories that, that Alma's sharing and the stories that you're sharing as well. Um, how do you have ideas or do you have suggestions as to um, how we as Canadians, as citizens, as voters in this election can do a better job of, um, of raising these issues and sharing these stories. I mean, um, I was encouraged uh, when I listened to the French debate last night that there was actually a section on international issues, which isn't always the case in Canadian federal elections, but of course it was predominantly focused on Afghanistan and the, and the, and the crisis there. Um, entonces, Janet, maybe I can take a crack at repeating myself in Spanish and you can fill in the blanks. Um, Alma, estoy preguntando que yo estoy de acuerdo con Mueni que sería muy importante que lo, los candidatos aquí en el Canadá pues, uh, escuchen las historias que está, o la, la, la situación que está um, expresando y también lo que está expresando Mueni. Um, y ya que ellos no, no están, ¿cómo es, uh, ustedes tienen idea de cómo nosotros podemos presentar esta realidad, estas historias para que presta un poco más de atención y que, que tome en cuenta de, de cómo es la situación y cómo es la responsabilidad de Canadá. Yo había dicho también que ayer había una, un debate entre los, los líderes federales y yo vi que había una cuestión sobre asuntos internacionales que no es siempre el caso en el contexto de elecciones canadienses. Pero mismo así era el énfasis era más sobre el crisis en Afganistán y, y no sobre la situación de los impactos climáticos en el sur. So, uh, thanks for that question. A couple of thoughts. I think this is actually a conversation I've been having for, for several uh, nights now uh, around the dinner table with my grandparents um, about, you know, what, what, what opportunity is there for us as Canadians living in, in, in my case, rural um, Eastern Canada to have an impact uh, on, on what we're seeing in terms of the direction of the government. And given that we're experiencing these uh, national issues, which are also global. So uh, one thing that um, I can say is for us, uh, to acknowledge that we are dealing with, with global issues. They are complex. They are multifaceted. They will need all of us at the table to figure out solutions that work for everyone. Even Alma mentioned this need for collaboration. They are working on the ground. 
and, and others on the ground in the Global South are working hard. They have been working hard, but there is a, there is a need for focused intentional collaboration to hear what they're saying, what their priorities are, and then for us to bring those priorities to our uh, candidates and our government leaders, recognizing that these issues actually go span across political platforms. It's, it's gonna take a completely different vision and courageous leadership to steer the ship, as it were, um, toward transformation and, and recognizing that uh, focusing on one or two areas that may be of interest or where we might be feeling the pinch, it, it, the long-term view is what we need. We need a long-term view because this is a long game and, and we've got to poise ourselves, educate ourselves, come together and, and ask the questions that we need to be asking about what is can what is Canada's role uh, on the international stage because everything is interconnected. So what we do here has implications elsewhere, and and being aware of that. Um, Alma. Um... Lo que ha dicho Mueni es que, um, a ver, que, eh, es, 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 esa pregunta eh, es parte de una conversación que ha tenido con sus amigos alrededor de la mesa y con otras personas, y es que, ¿qué es realmente lo que se puede hacer si es que tenemos aquí una oportunidad bajo estas elecciones si podemos incidir de alguna manera? Uh, y, 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 y si, ¿qué, ¿qué oportunidades hay de hacer algo, no solo a nivel nacional, pero a nivel global también? Eh, es importante eh, 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 hacer, reconocer, hacerle reconocer que el asunto es global, que es multisectorial y que se requiere ¿no? una intencionalidad en la colaboración. Eso es muy importante. Eh, hay, que hacer, hay que hacer conocer eh, esos problemas a los, eh, a los políticos, o sea, los problemas que hay en el sur, eh, a los políticos. Eh, pero es importante también hacer ver que sí hay un problema aquí, otro problema allí, pero se necesita, es una visión a largo plazo. Sí. Que es algo que sea dirigido a largo plazo, donde haya un aspecto de educación muy importante, um, pero es, 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 es una pregunta, es, ¿cuál es el rol que Canadá tiene en esto? Eh, teniendo en cuenta que cualquier cosa que haga va a tener sus implicaciones en otras partes. Sin duda. Uh -huh. Totalmente de acuerdo. I totally agree. Just to let everyone know that as you post questions, I'm um, translating into Spanish so that Jeanette can then um, relay them to Alma. So I'm sending them directly to you, Jeanette, and I've just sent you one that's come from a member of the, um, the audience. Eh, uh, Alma, hmm. gracias por su presentación. ¿Cómo está respondiendo el gobierno colombiano a los asuntos ambientales en Colombia? Con legislación, están protegiendo a los campesinos, quien está perdiendo su tierra, están dando apoyos a, lo, a, a los CNGs como ustedes. Esa pregunta. If you could do that, I'll just keep typing because there's more questions. <laughs> <laughs> so the question in English is, uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, uh, how is the uh, Colombian government uh, answering to these issues? 
um, to envir environmental issues. With legislation, are they protecting the farmers uh, uh, that are losing their land? Mm, uh, are they supporting NGOs like yours? How does it end? In English? <laughs> no, in, 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 in Spanish, I <laughs> traduce. Hazlo en partecitas para no perder, ¿eh? porque ya esta hora del día pff, se me da todo. O sea, lo que entendí es que si el gobierno está haciendo algo. Ya, yeah, eso okay. es. Sí, sí. Y que si está apoyando eh, estas políticas. ¿sí? Sí, bueno, sí. ¿Qué, ¿qué hace si tiene legislación? ¿Cómo, cómo está apoyando el problema de asunto climático okay. en Colombia? Si sí, sí. sí tiene legislación, si sí, sí, sí protege al campesino que está perdiendo su tierra, si sí está dando apoyo a las ONG, ¿qué, qué hace? Bueno, a nivel de leyes está, ¿no? <ríe> a nivel de, de políticas, ¿no? Es más, esta semana ha habido una, una, una reunión y hoy mismo, hoy día, mmm, eh, las grandes corporaciones regionales ambientales, ¿no? Tenía un gran foro para comprometer el gobierno. Obviamente que esto se desborda de las otras, de los otros problemas, de los otros problemas que son consecuencias de lo que ya decía en la presentación, que es el conflicto, que es la parte de migración, que es el cultivo ilícito, ¿no? Entonces, si sí hay unas políticas, pero después desborda tanto estos otros problemas que el gobierno cumple con decirlas, están ahí y, y no hay a veces una real inversión. Porque se ponen, pero no se implementan. Uh -huh. Ok. So, um, yes, there are some actions that the government is doing in terms of policy development. Uh, now, the issue is that there are many good, but they are not enforced. They are in paper. Um, and uh, there are good pieces of work happening, like uh, at this moment, particularly today, the environmental uh, regional corporations, our bodies regional across the country, uh, had a forum where they will be discussing how to address this, this issue. So in a way to inform and, and enforce the government in place to, to follow it. But the issue in Colombia is that there are so many other issues like the conflict, like the migration, <laughs> particularly the displaced, internally displaced people uh, that are all result of all these other uh, uh, actions, you know, uh, so they, they, they overflow, you know, <laughs> the, the problems and the needs and all that. So it's like there are so many other things to follow and to solve that there is nothing that happens in action. Uh, Alma, la esperanza es lo último que se acaba. But hope is the last thing that dies. <laughs> um, uh, uh, I, I understand that there is another question, and it is that if, además de los compromisos de acciones de la comunidad donde trabajas, se están haciendo cambios en las formas de vida, enfrentando las empresas mineras y agrícolas. Mm -hmm. eh, eh, Esa es la pregunta. Y hay un comentario. Hay algo que falta, como mencionaba Mueni, en desafíos complejos aquí en Canadá que debemos cambiar en nuestras prácticas mineras y agrícolas y no exportar prácticas no, no sostenibles. Pero la pregunta es si han habido otros cambios. So I understand the question is if, if besides the, 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 the action and the work uh, 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 that the organization is engaging to in the different communities. Are there any other changes 
like there are lifestyle changes and if there is a um a you people are facing the challenging the 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 mining industries or or the big uh, develop uh, agri, agri, agri Spanish. <laughs> no or the different um um agribusinesses <laughs> So that's the question in, in, in English. En español es la que te hice la pregunta. Es ah, bueno. para los okay. otros. Sí, hay cambios. Se van dando cambios, ¿no? Eh, aunque sean eh, poco a poco. Hoy hay más conciencia sobre, sobre la necesidad del reciclaje, de la educación y cultura ambiental. Hoy hay más conciencia. Obviamente que falta mucho para trabajar. Entonces, para bien hay un cambio, ¿no? Pero eh, eh, la inquietud, por eso decía, con una situación difícil, la esperanza es lo último que se pierde, ¿no? Porque es mucho lo para hacer, es mucho para hacer, y porque esas otras problemáticas que se viven en el continente, a veces nos hace, bueno, eh, atrasar ese compromiso. Pero sí, claro que hay un progreso... Y el problema fue la pandemia. La pandemia nos suspendió o nos encerró y nos empobreció más. Veníamos en un ritmo de trabajo y nos empobreció a todos más. Mm. Yes, yes, of course, there has been changes. And um, there, is, there is more awareness right now. And definitely uh, people have taken on more recycling, like an important piece. Uh, there is more environmental education, um, but uh, but the, the the reality is that there are so many other issues that they take over, and and sometimes you know there's no attention paid to that. Um, one very uh, significant aspect is what COVID did. The impact of COVID was enormous. COVID um, impoverished more the communities and, and closed it on uh, the work that many people were doing. The, everybody was working hard and doing things and everything seemed to be advancing and this, but then COVID hit it and it was like, you know, going back. Thank you, sí, bien. Mm -hmm. Lori's dropped an interesting question in the chat that I might ask Mueni to start uh, with, and that is, um, how does Canada's commitment to climate financing compare with other G7 countries? Um, and is there leadership from other countries that we could hold up? Yeah, thanks, Laurie. Um, I think this is a, an important question. Um, actually, Canada is one of the worst emitters of the G7 countries. We have a history of trailing behind and not really um, doing very well to honor our international commitments and pledges. And so the fact that uh, Trudeau came out this summer and made that pledge to double, it didn't just happen outside of uh, processes of engagement and advocacy over years, which that can't really be underestimated. Um, and because I think there was a question about um, you know, what, what role can Canadians play in, in pushing this and really humanizing the climate finance from the technical side? Uh, and, and this is really linking it to the people for whom this makes a huge impact. Um, so Canada, in terms of because of this new commitment, uh, it seems to be, uh, you know, moving forward in terms of leadership in within the G7. Uh, I know Canada and Germany um, in the summer as well, 
they were appointed um, by the UN system to lead in helping uh, coordinate and, and bring together and the delivery of climate finance, climate funds from other wealthy countries, because there's a gap, right? There's a gap. Wealthy countries back in 2015 committed to deliver 100 billion to address the issue. Sorry, Jeanette, should I stop? Yeah, maybe you hold on the last two lines and I can I can do this too. Uh, so the question was, um, uh, how was the, is the question here in the chat? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, okay. Sí. Dice, uh, o pregunta Lori, um, uh, ¿cómo el, el compromiso de Canadá al financiamiento climático, cómo um, compara con los otros países del, G, del um, G7, o sea, de los, los países industriales? ¿Cómo, ¿Dónde se ubica en comparación? Y este, hay liderazgo de otros países um, que podemos uh, mostrar a nuestro propio gobierno como uh, un ejemplo para, um, uh, para seguir, ¿no? Eh, y la respuesta de, de Mueni es que eh, eh, realmente Canadá es el peor. En, en, en relación al cumplimiento de sus acuerdos y de sus compromisos. Um, es el peor del grupo de los G7, el grupo de los siete. Um, eh, eh, históricamente siempre ha estado detrás ¿no? de las cosas que ha prometido hacer. Um, ahora, el anuncio que se hizo, que, que el primer ministro Trudeau hizo acerca de doblar el, el, el presupuesto no fue una cosa que pasó de la noche a la mañana. Eso es algo que realmente corresponde a años de cabildeo de muchos grupos y de empujar muchos grupos para que esto se, se diera. Eh, porque ha habido desde mucho tiempo uh, un, 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 una fuerza para que eh, eh, el gobierno humanice, digamos, este, este, esta acción en relación al cambio climático, ¿no? ¿No? Que, que, que son personas las que viven afectadas. Ahora, junto con, con Alemania, eh, Canadá parece en este momento, ¿no? Moverse como un poquito más adelante eh, para avanzar en la entrega de, de, de estos digamos, de este, de este compromiso. Should I just finish the thought or that's it? Okay, yeah, I was just going to say that um, the, the commitment by wealthy nations to deliver that 100 billion uh, to address climate vulnerabilities in the global south has not been delivered. So Canada and Germany uh, have been appointed to work with the other wealthy nations, the G7 nations, to deliver that. And uh, I mentioned in my presentation during the summer, I really heard this um, call and sense of frustration. If you could read in between the lines during those intercession meetings in June, uh, the UN uh, intercession meetings, which are preparing for the UN conference in November. Global South parties were very clear about that, you know, wealthy countries cannot ask global South countries for climate adaptation plans when wealthy countries have not delivered funds to do that work. So there, it's like there's an impasse there. There's, there's a broken trust. Um, and, and that's what has to be rebuilt, this trust that we are in one world and we have to work together. That's the only way we can address the issues we're facing. And to do that, knowing that these funds, once they're delivered, they need to be delivered. They need to be delivered immediately. And, and this is part of the call that we as Canadians here can, uh, can ask candidates 
where, where do you stand on international climate finance? Um, because that delivery and the implementation needs to center Global South priorities. Um. Eh, bueno, en conexión con el asunto de, de que Naciones Unidas nombró o seleccionó Canadá y Alemania para um, que se hagan cargo de, 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 de um, avanzar ¿no? en los procesos para la entrega de esos 100 mil millones, si es que es uh, 100 billones, yo nunca, siempre tengo esa es confusión, 100 mil millones eh, que se han ofrecido. Ahora, una de las cosas claras es que durante las sesiones que se tuvieron en el mes de junio, se notó que habían algunos vacíos, que habían unos um, encontrones, digamos, eh, eh, por, en relación a quién pone la plata y qué es lo que se hace, eh, y que habían mensajes muy claros de que los países ricos no les pueden estar exigiendo a los países del sur que estén haciendo una serie de acciones para los cuales los países ricos no han puesto ninguna plata, ni han puesto ningún dinero. Eh, 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 ahora, eh, ese dinero, eh, esos fondos deben ser entregados y deben ser entregados lo más rápido posible, de manera tal que en la implementación de los, las acciones que se, que se vayan a implementar correspondan a las necesidades reales de cada uno de esos países. Jeanette, there were a couple of comments made that I, um, uh, in English, that I think everyone was able to see by Gail, and I've just translated those um, for you to share with Elma as well. They were more comments than questions. Mm. Mm. Okay. Eh, algunos comentarios, tú dices una cosa que los canadienses pueden hacer es empujar la posición de la oficina creada como el Ombudsman, que es el... Eh, sí. Sí, veedor. Sí. Para derechos humanos y protección ambiental, cuando las empresas extractivas canadienses trabajando en el sur global y en otras partes, debe recibir poderes, recursos humanos y herramientas para realizar el trabajo de esta oficina. Sí. Uh -huh. uh, ¿Sí? Comentario. También debemos crear límites en el poder de las industrias mineras y extractivas para poder hacer cabildeo con nuestro gobierno. Su acceso directo al gabinete sin la participación de los miembros, miembros del parlamento es enorme. They are, and I, I've noticed someone has sent me a message directly, which is actually a question for Mueni. <laughs> so I'll, I'll just read it to you, Mueni. Um, Will those funds, I believe the 100 billion, uh, be delivered to governments or to NGOs such as Comunicarte? Alma told us about the multiple and serious issues that governments have to deal with, and perhaps the most expedient method for assisting the target areas would be best delivered by those already working in the communities. Now, maybe exactly. before you answer it, if um, Jeanette, do you want me to just Translate that. Entonces, una, um, Alma, una pregunta para Mueni, y quizá usted también tiene una, una respuesta. Um, los, los mil millones de dólares que los gobiernos um, del G7 han, um, dicen que van a, van a, a dar a, a estas cuestiones, son, la, la pregunta es, ¿son para gobiernos en el sur o para organizaciones o ONGs como como ustedes, uh, como comunicarte. Um, dice que usted um, nos explicó cómo um, que, que, que los gobiernos tienen uh, múltiples, múltiples y serios asuntos que están um, manejando y quizás lo, lo más um, eficiente o efectiva sería que 
los mil millones de dólares van a ustedes, a, los, a las ONGs, para asistir a um, comunidades específicas en zonas específicas um, y uh, para, usado para las comunidades en sí mismo. Yo, yo quiero, quiero, mmm, ah, voy, sí, eh, voy a, a unir esa con el comentario de qué está haciendo el, el grupo de, del G7, ¿no? Creo que de, de estos países eh, realmente sentimos, o yo siento, y con las organizaciones cercanas, quizás uno de los países que más, más están metiendo sí es el alemán, es, es Alemania. ¿no? Eh, a través de GIZ, Agencia de Cooperación Alemana, y, y sé que del Ministerio de Relaciones Exteriores, eh, sobre todo eh, con respecto al cambio climático con, eh, en la Amazonía, ¿no? en el trabajo de la Amazonía. Se encuentra, se ve varios proyectos, eh, ahí directamente con ONGs, Directamente con ONGs. Um, pero eh, también es que hay gobiernos que se han comprometido con el gobierno colombiano a ayudar a implementar ¿no? el acuerdo de paz cuando se desmovilizó la guerrilla de la FARC. ¿ya? Y entonces ahí es donde luego los dineros a veces se, se utilizan y no necesariamente llegan y cubren o están respondiendo realmente la finalidad. Pero mm, sí, siento que uno de, de los países que más uno reconoce en los trabajos en, en las regiones y que tenga que ver con, expresamente con el cambio climático, sí es Alemania. Uh -huh. um, I, I would like to uh, uh, connect my answer to the, the last comment in terms of the, of the countries of the G7. Um, in Colombia, from the Colombian experience, I believe that perhaps Germany is the country that is more seen to, do, to be doing some good work. Uh, uh, it's more engaged and particularly in the Amazon region. Um, and they are doing their work through NGOs. Now, there are uh, some government-to-government uh, -government bilateral, you know, agreement uh, with the Colombia and other governments uh, where, where money has been offered or promised for the peace accord, implementation of the peace accords. But, uh, but uh, at that moment, uh, we, we don't really know what happened because the money, is, uh, we don't see it and we don't know if that's you know, what is finally the use of it. And sometimes the, 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 the funds are diverted to other things that we really don't know. Uh, if I can come in on uh, the last question, just to offer a reflection, I think the question was about uh, fund disbursement and who, if that 100 billion is dispersed, how, what are the modalities and how do we ensure that organizations that um, are on the ground and are familiar with the issues and challenges and know the appropriate solutions to those challenges are the ones that are partnered um, to be able to, to do the programming? Well. Just, just to go back a little bit, in my presentation, I talked about um, the, the, the last, Canada's last climate funding of 2.65 billion. So those funds were predominantly dispersed in, through multilateral development banks. So Asian Development Bank, the World Bank, other uh, Africa Development Bank, and so when they're dispersed through those institutions, Canada basically just says, okay, well, you can, you can do programming faster than we can. So we're just gonna give you 300 million or a billion and you do that. So how they disperse, they roll that out is actually in the form of loans, 
which means an organization in Tanzania, an organization in Afghanistan, an organization in Bolivia cannot actually access those loans or farmers in these places cannot access those loans without the weight of having to repay that loan. So what we're advocating for with the, the 100 billion that needs to be delivered, Canada's new uh, doubled climate finance to 5.3 billion, these funds need to be dispersed in the form of grants. They need to be focused on adaptation and mitigation. So 50% adaptation, 50% mitigation. Sorry. Um, in terms of, of the, the um, if the money is going to the, the NGOs. Uh, en español. Y si, si el dinero está uh, en relación a la pregunta de si los dineros van para uh, los gobiernos o para, para los uh, uh, orga organismos no gubernamentales, eh, pues la idea sería que pudiera ir para los organismos no gubernamentales, para las quienes están haciendo trabajo y quienes saben realmente cuáles son eh, directamente eh, en lo local lo que, lo que se necesita hacer. Ahora, si nos remitimos a lo que pasó con el último, uh, los últimos dineros que Canadá ofreció, prometió y entregó, que eran un total de 2.65 mil millones, eh, fueron uh, predominantemente distribuidos mediante las eh, instituciones multilaterales como el, eh, el Fondo Monetario o como el... Eh, ¿no? todas estas, y fueron dadas no como subsidios, con, sino o becas, o, sino como préstamos. Entonces, uh -huh. ella en la presentación, Muen en su presentación, por eso uh -huh. hace énfasis, en que el dinero que va a salir no se vaya a dar como préstamos, porque uh -huh. si, si no estarían las en los reciba forzados a pagarla. Eh, eh, lo otro es que mm, y los, uh, las organizaciones no gubernamentales no podrían tener acceso real, realmente a esos dineros. Ahora, eh, es importante que también esos dineros sean entregados para hacer las dos cosas, para hacer el trabajo de, de adaptación y trabajo de, de mitigación. En lo posible, 50-50%. Gracias. Thank you. Carrie, you had one more question in the chat that um, is, is a question um, for us Canadians, but I have translated it, Jeanette, for uh, Alma. I'm wondering, though, about our time, how we are for uh, responding to that. Uh, I was wondering the same thing, Suzanne, after I, uh, after I typed out the question. Um, and uh, yeah. Um, so I don't know, Mueni, if you have a, a brief response that you'd like to make or whether we, um, I also want to give Bishop Priscilla uh, another moment before we, before we wrap up. Sure, just a, just a statement to say that that's a critical question. And uh, one of the things I was actually starting to type it out in the chat that um, our position needs to be one of solidarity with our brothers and sisters in the Global South. And it needs, our action needs to be informed by the needs and priorities of the Global South, the, the, the systematic issues that are being reinforced by COVID, climate, economic disasters, all kinds of things. There are systematic issues that we need to look at. So um, the fact that there are barriers to, to attending COP26 is one of them. Right. Eh. Alma, te mandé la pregunta ahí, pero dice, en el contexto donde hay barreras serias para la participación en el, en ahorita en la, en la, el evento de COP26, del, eh, y para que la gente del sur global participe, ¿qué podemos hacer como canadienses, como iglesias, as, para asegurar que haya avances del asunto de financiamiento climático? Eh, en resumen, la respuesta de, de Mueni está que eh, sí, es una pregunta muy, muy importante, eh, porque tenemos que mirar a ciertos 
problemas sistémicos que hay ahí y, y, y en, en relación a esa participación. Entonces, lo más importante es que tenemos que ser solidarios y promover de una u otra manera la participación del Global Sur. Ajá. Uh -huh. Creo que importante mmm, la academia, importante estar presente también con las organizaciones sociales, ¿no? Eh, eh, el movimiento que hay de líderes eh, defensores del medio ambiente, reporteros del medio ambiente, líderes del medio ambiente, ¿no? De modo que se aproveche la oportunidad de hacer una gran campaña, hacer una gran campaña todos sonidos, ¿no? Y, y, y de modo que se aborde los diferentes campos, creo yo, ¿no? Y estar ahí presente eh, desde los diferentes campos, ¿no? Uh, 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 my view, I see, is it is very important that the academy be present, that also the, 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 social, the, the social organizations be there, as well as the movement of the of the defense defenders of, of the environment and the leaders of the environment. Uh, it is important to have a presence of the different sectors. So for a collaboration to happen. Bishop Priscilla, can I invite you to make um, your closing comments, please? So much. Thank you. This has been a really rich conversation this evening, and thank you all for your your questions and for your engagement. It's been really good. Some of the key words that I heard over and over again that really resonated with me are um, collaboration, inclusive dialogue, uh, amplifying priorities, and our need to join hands uh, with the Global South. I did hear very clearly that we are terrible at keeping our promises and our commitments to climate finance, and I know that uh, we, we can get better. And uh, I, along with you, commit to doing my best to support that and to uh, be an ally in that. But the thing that really struck me the most was the enthusiastic comment from Alma, hope is the last thing that dies. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you for that, for that gift. <laughs> and peace to you all. Thank you all so much for your uh, support of this tonight. Thank you, Bishop. Uh, Rusilla. Um, uh, and thanks to Mueni. Muchas gracias a Alma, Janet, Suzanne. Thanks to Lori uh, and everybody who helped pull this event together. Uh, and to all of you who came out to participate. Um, we're grateful so to see you here tonight. We know that this is a busy season and we're, we're so glad that you've come. Um, I'd like to take the opportunity now to invite you to uh, come back next week. Uh, for our second webinar, which will look at Indigenous rights, uh, reconciliation and climate justice. And then on September 23rd, and then a couple of days, of course, after the, the election, uh, for a discussion about the need for Canada to reduce emissions and invest in a just transition. Uh, Laurie's dropping a few uh, links in the chat now. Um, I just want to share a little bit of information and I will pause, Jeanette, because I think you want to... <laughs> share yeah, and I'm I, know, I, have been, so I have been typing quickly to Alma uh, uh, what she's saying, uh, but she, Alma, is writing in the chat. Thank you very much to all for everything. Thank you. Um, we also invite you, as I said off the top, this is a, an initiative of uh, For the Love of Creation, which brings together many churches and faith-based organizations in Canada. So we've got lots of ways that you can stay engage, engaged, um, including uh, a symposium that's being organized for October 30th. Uh, we hope you'll participate in that. An additional uh, uh, 
opportunity that I wanted to highlight is that For the Love of Creation and collaboration with the United Church of Canada is putting together a virtual COP26 delegation. We've talked a little bit about uh, participation there. So um, if that sounds interesting, take a look uh, and let us know um, if you're interested. Um, and then of course, um, one of the next big moments is our election on September 20th. A number of organizations around the table have put together uh, election bulletins, election resources. Um, please take a look. Please engage with your candidates. Uh, have conversations where you are with the people that matter to you. And, um, and get out and vote on September 20th. Uh, thanks again to all of you for this evening. Merci beaucoup, muchas gracias, and miigwech. Good night. Muchas gracias. Thank you. <laughs> gracias, you. gracias, Alma. Gracias, gracias. Muchas gracias, Alma. Thank you. A ustedes, muchas gracias, thank you. También. Thank you to all. Bye-bye. You're a rock star, Jeanette. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Janet vas a poder descansar. <laughs> sí, ahora sí. Me cago. No, tranquila. <laughs> y, y tu mamá.